So we're ready to call the meeting to order. We'll start with the pledge, and then Mr. Patton will lead us in our prayer, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our gracious Lord and our Father in heaven, we come before thee this evening in the most humble manner, asking your blessings upon us as we enter into this meeting, we ask you to bless us with patience and understanding and compassion, that we will do the best for our citizens and make the decisions that will be for the betterment of our community. We ask you to bless our nation. We ask you to ease the turmoil, have firm heads, but clear heads that will make decisions that be the best for our country, that we will be able to still be one nation under God. For these things and all things, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Welcome everybody out tonight. And we're going to start with our first order of business will be the approval of the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion is second. Those in favor signify by the aye. Aye. Opposed same. That motion passes. Uh, next item is approval of the bills. Thank you, motion we pay the bills. Second. second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by the aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. Now I'm going to ask Dane. Oh, there you yeah. go. I'm going to ask the a permission of the uh, commission if we could ask Dan to go ahead and do, he's an auditor, to get this uh, audit report presentation done because he's got a pretty good road ahead of him going home. I don't I have trouble with mine too. Yeah, mine's, mine sits too low. Yeah. I don't have to raise mine up. Feels like it is too. Thanks, sir. Thank you. And you're doing all right. You're doing all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you doing all right. Yeah, you're 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 doing all right. Yeah, it's coming in late, but it's not due to anything during the well, It's a little earlier <laughs> than last year, not by a lot. <laughs> but uh, I'll turn the floor over to you, Dan. Okay. <clears throat> well, as usual, if you've been around this for a while, you know there are different things here. This is taken one. It's called a SES-114 report. And the purpose for this is basically to uh, inform the commission. Since all the work that we do on this basically is, is through administration of the city through the mayor and the staff and in some cases the commission doesn't even know or whatever the legislative body is doesn't really have any idea what the audit is about in fact it's even been done in office so <clears throat> these are the, the issues that come up in an audit like this uh, the uh, only major estimate is depreciation and you know if you're if you're in business depreciation is is an estimate you're you have to decide on a uh, method and then you have to come up with some sort of a useful life for it. Uh, no difficulties encountered, no correct or incorrect misstatements, no disagreements with management. We requested certain representations from management, which just comes in the form of a letter. Basically just tells us tells us that they're not aware of any of anything that we needed to know that we weren't given. Um, consultation with other independent accountants. There is a little bit of that because there's a firm in Litchfield that actually prepares the financial statements, but that's not, they don't really, you don't really work with them on the audit as such. And um, that's, you know, what that thing is. <clears throat> the rest of it is the audit itself. <clears throat> this is, uh, it seems to grow a little bit every year. This was 47 pages. Page one. Two and three are the opinion, and this is a clean opinion. Page four is a statement, statement in that position. This is the 
presentation, which is on a business-like basis, <coughs> governmental activities, <coughs> principally the general fund, but you have a road fund and a <coughs> uh, you have a, uh, either about four, maybe five of governmental activities, which primarily, primarily the general fund and fire. Um, the difference in this and what you budget on is you sell uh, some of these non-current assets, capital assets not being depreciated, and capital assets not depreciation. And that's everything from police cars, fire trucks, furniture, computers. Of course, obviously, this building is a big part of that. Then you get into these uh, deferred outflows of resources, and then down the bottom, the inflows and pension liability. These are the things that have been have been carried for a number of years now because basically it puts it puts the city of Beaver Dam on the basis it would have to be if these underfunded uh, pension plans suddenly that the state came out and told Beaver Dam they want you to settle up on it. And if so, uh, you would owe net pension liability of two million two hundred twenty four thousand two hundred twenty three dollars right now. And it's not that anybody expects that you're going to do that any time, but it's out there hanging and you know, they're working on some things to try to remedy that. But the bottom line, net position in that is for the, the uh, governmental activities is 6.4 million. The business type, you know, that's always uh, uh, water, sewer, sanitation. And, uh, that one is always on this kind of a basis. And total net position on that is 4 million, 665, 679. Uh, but if you look at those non-current assets, if you look at it as a whole, the, uh, the city as a whole, including the business type activities, which could be some of these vehicles you have out here, but it's water lines and sewer lines and whatever, but that all together is uh, something over $9 million after depreciation. The component of the unit over to the right is uh, tourism. And page five is the same presentation of business like Starts out with expenses of two million five eighty seven nine eighty one governmental activities, and then you go across and you charges for services, which are very little charges for services for the general fund and those. So you have operating grants contributions. A lot of that four million four one fifty one. There's quite a bit of federal money involved in that. Um, Amy asked me a few months ago about a single audit. If a governmental agency expends more than $750,000 in one year of federal money, and you have to have what's called a single audit, it's very expensive and it's a compliance audit. Well, it just happens that you're kind of right under the wire, even though you got more than $750,000 in one year. And you, you didn't spend it. You didn't spend all of it, so you were spared that. And you know, this audit would cost more, and there'd be a lot more scrutiny from, uh, from federal agencies on that business type activities, and some of that's kind of a rerun of the other, it just does it in a different format. But you've got expenses of two two million two seventy eight one thirty nine, 139 and of course, by far the biggest part of that is all for charges for services, which is what it's supposed to be, because those are supposed to be self-sufficient. And of course, on the governmental activities to fund all of that, because there's so little in charges for services, that you have all sorts of taxes, occupational licenses, uh, and then a payment from uh, tourism. So then that comes up to that same bottom line, the six six point four million, four million six sixty five, six seventy nine. I just want to call our attention to the difference between June thirtieth of twenty two and yes. June thirtieth of twenty three. Very no no uh, no no comparison really. Look at the changes in net position. Yeah. Was an increase of almost two hundred one thousand dollars. Balance sheet on the government fund. This is the same basis that you always that you budget on. This doesn't include any of the pension items, long-term debt. It doesn't include any of the fixed assets. But the uh, fund balance there is three million six sixty five four fifteen in the bottom. So that's how you get from that to the business side. The biggest part of that being the capital assets. Page seven. And we do we do have uh, budgetary comparison later. But this one is, this is pretty much where we put the budget on. And the general fund of almost 3.2 million revenues, expenditures 2 million 552, come out to uh, bottom line, changing unbalanced, 564,522 of the good, 
and then these non-major form cemetery and so forth. Those are those also have positive. So uh, the year overall net change would come down to five or ninety eight thousand one thirty five. And then if you look uh, then on the, on page eight, it shows the increase of seven thirty one three up to Page nine is kind of a repeat there. It just breaks down the project in terms of being water, sewer, and sanitation. On page 10 is a little more revealing, I think. It shows that sewer pretty much held its own. In fact, it showed a little bit of a Sanitation was a, a small loss, but water, water show loss overall when you transfer to the other almost $95,000. Those overall had an had increase of 130,168. Page 11 is actual cash flow. You can see the money in and money out. Uh, sewer again had an increase of 262. Sanitation, slight increase. But water uh, had an increase in cash, 272,718 dollars. Bottom end shows some of the, uh, the operating money that came from. But if you see, that's 27,478 is a little bit misleading because it put $314,383 of new assets in the service in the market and the water side. So, a whole lot of notes on the service. Page 23 shows all the changes in this process. Governmental activities uh, increased to 434, 687, depreciation in business type activities. And uh, this shows uh, the increases on uh, water, sewer, and sanitation. Each part of that being water, of course. And then uh, bottom line, these, these fixed assets for tourism, obviously that doesn't reflect all the assets that are out there, but these are more or less the assets, uh, the fixed assets, equipment type items mostly, that tourism was acquired basically since it, got, since it came into service. The other, those other assets, the main part of it, the, uh, the building and those improvements are all carried in the under the city. Uh, long-term debt, you see the changes in long-term debt. The only increases had to do with the pension. Uh, everything else was a reduction. There's no new debt as such in the uh, bottom page 25 shows how that million six forty was paid off. Some new activities. Uh, it shows how that is paid off. It ends up in the cures in 2041. Um, Starting on page 28, and that really, all the way almost to the end of it, is entirely uh, disclosures that are required to be done just because uh, Pensions, the OPEF, which is the, the health insurance. And that's that's really all of the notes and uh, supplementary information. Page 36 is the budget. Total revenues were 29,697 more than budget. Expenditures were 161, this is on page 36. Uh, 191, 320 less than the amount budget. And then other financial sources. So actually, the, the uh, changes in fund balance was uh, $315,762 more than budget. Because some of that does have to do with uh, proceeds to sell the assets. Then there's a whole lot more from 37 to really the promotion and everything all the way through. 42, they're again mostly about the pension and okay. Uh 
43 is a balance sheet for uh, Cemetery, Community Pride, LGEA, and Road. 44 is an income statement for those. You can see really uh, all four of those have caused a balance at the end of the year. 45 just breaks the in the charges for services of the project. So the rest of it would be where there would be any findings if, if we had had any issue. We didn't do that on the So, questions? 47, 47 pages of this. <laughs> we had a good year. We did a good year. No question about it. So, maybe questions? Of, of the ones that I really enjoy coming to. Well, we appreciate that. But, you know, thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Hey, clean my door. All right. Now we'll get back in line with the uh, old business, the uh, first reading of the ordinance on sign. Regulations. It's one that we gave out. Nancy gave the information out last week, last month. You want to do signage first? Yeah. I think I, when I spoke to you last time, it was, um, the gentleman that uh, helped me with all of this, that, uh, uh, executive director and teacher for planning and zoning. Um, he helped me with all this, and the signage, the reason I really needed to help with him is that all the laws had changed on that. That was over my head, and I knew it. So I asked for help, and uh, so I'm not. I wouldn't want to change anything that he put there because he he directed it from the sample that comes from KLC. So, whatever you want, thank him. I don't. I don't know any other way than you do what it says. <laughs> so, whatever you think, I, I can I can question it. If you well, want. The signage has a lot of legalese involved in it, just because of lawsuits and court opinions and everything else on them. So we pretty restricted. Also, if you're going to look at the signage, if anyone is interested, I brought down some samples of a new uh, two forms for when election signage, when it can start, when it can come down, because they can't, other than coming and tell me maybe what size they want to put up, I have to ignore it until they get to a danger or something like that, pretty much, because you're not supposed to read the sign. So I did it basically, basically what we're doing is we're working from the sides, which is what Yeah, for the first reading. Make a motion we accept first reading of the sign ordinance. Second. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify by the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. That motion passes. Next item. Do we have to do anything on the definitions? Let's go ahead and approve the definitions and just so we do have something to back us up. I move to approve the on. definitions of second. Second. We have a motion second on the approval of the definitions under the planning and zoning ordinance. Is there any further discussion? 
Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same. Motion passes. And then the other one we had was on the business districts. Uh, Nancy gave out the proposed one last month. I've got some questions on it, but I have no problem with going ahead and approving this one for our first reading to get started. And then we can <coughs> work through the other issues between now and next month. I move to approve the first reading. I would like to have you all think about this one But I still have to work with it. You don't have a B2 right out of town or anything. You don't have all that. You almost have a B3, which is <coughs> running down through here, so which is upside down. So I have always worked with the kind of business you can get in the city, you get it in, uh, which is what I've always thought we're supposed to do because you want that in. So I'm hoping that with having different definitions and stuff that like that. I won't be the one that's happened to decide what everything is, just use what we have now. I think the only question will be on some stuff that might come under conditional use permit. Don't we, we do not, any of us want to exclude a business, but sometimes I feel like the way we're laid out, Beaverdam's laid out so strange, we're not blocks like most cities are. No, some places we've got a hundred foot from the highway this is a business right behind it, it's a whole neighborhood and in some businesses i feel like those neighborhoods should have a little say or a little at least input mm -hmm. into concerns that maybe we can correct with conditional use but like i say that's something we can work on before next month and then you have always the differences in who thinks should be a conditional use and who doesn't think you should and i just got called on that a while back so uh, i want to well i found out what part of that problem was because under B2, it was really clear, but under B3, they didn't, yeah. and I don't understand why that was. I don't, I don't either, because I had always thought I had to take it and step down, because I had no, I had no other choice. I had to do that to get something going and to check it. So I would try to put them through as a conditional use, and this time, I, that way everybody could make a comment, yeah. know what was going there, and make a condition to say, well, we don't want that to extend any farther back, so they can't. Or well, we that. might want a fence here or there, oh, and right. that's. And, well, you can do the fencing with just me writing them a letter. Yeah, I know, but I would rather be clarified under conditional well, use you can do that to keep also. the neighbors happy. But that's a, uh, like I said, I don't want to be questioned. I just want to say, you know, yeah, it goes there or it doesn't. So, <laughs> that's that's a question no matter what, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not, like I say, I want to get any business in. We can't. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify aye. Uh, Opposed, same. And that motion passes. Okay, moving on down to new business. Uh, first item is a Kenergy franchise, franchise renewal. Do you have anything on it? Because I don't have anything. Put that off for next month. Okay, we'll have to put that off. I thought that there really was going to be someone from Kenergy here tonight. No show? Okay, well, we'll pass on down to item number two new hire. Uh, Dennis Blankenship. Do you need any more information? Yeah, we'll have to have. Yeah. Uh, what's it going to be hired as? What is starts average? Sanitation, uh, 11 50 per hour, 50 cents after 90 days. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Need a motion. Make a motion. We hire Dennis Blankenship with our sanitation crew. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify that. Aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item was Dan Drain, who's already been here, so we'll move on down to Blaine Luttrell and Farrah Luttrell. You got the floor. So, I'm Blaine Farrah. <coughs> We've been talking about doing this for some time. We finally found a place we think is suitable, and that is put an RV park in Beaverdown. Uh, it's going to go behind Pizza Kings and the old Patco building that my sister-in-law, Nikki Riley, owns with Brian and Wendy King. We're going to start out with probably 10 to 12 nice lots. I've already went down there and did a little bit of clearing, uh, underbrush, 
and we'd probably get about 10 or 12 nice slots there'd be in the shade for uh, pretty much all day, except for late in the evening. What I need from the city, of course, is a blessing, and we need to run a water line, which we'll have to get a two inch meter and line, and I think Travis said it's up in the in the sidewalk, it up on 231. Not a big deal. And the other thing would be a storm drain. I need to put a 24 inch drain kind of at the corner, uh, the corner of the lot on the right side uh, where the storage buildings are. Behind A and P. Yeah. It'll be about 75 feet. And I, I got a map I drew up roughly just to show you guys what okay. we want. Have you looked at that? I the drainage. I haven't seen that yet. That's, we've talked about oh, okay. it. We talked about it. Yeah, he met me on site. We could run sewer if the city wanted that. If not, uh, we'll just do water and electric. Uh, I'm thinking Hux has the washout for campers now, so that'd be pretty easy for somebody. Well, I think, don't we have one? A washout. Dump where they can dump. We can dump them in where we take it to the county, mm -hmm. but we don't have them. Like RP a, dump site or we have a dump site, but not to clean, it won't be able to clean it. Not be able to clean it. Yeah. We have a place we could dump them out. Yes. If needed. Okay. So, anyway, uh -huh. uh, you want to see this? I would like to. Yeah. Where will they enter? It probably shows us on the map, doesn't it? <laughs> this is very exciting. Yeah. Uh, Here's 231, little entrance right there, have a lot, or the road, and eventually we'll have more up through here. But I'm just going to get started small and see how it goes. If it goes over good, we'll just keep adding. Now, is this the ability center? That is the ability center. Yes, okay. So, where I'd have to run um, at this corner. We'll have to run it over to this ditch, and it's about 75 feet, and I put a 24-inch drain in. And if we did sewer, and you guys decide you want to do that, or you can, you know, I guess you can get the city to make more money that way, we'd have to, uh, I think it's come in up in here. I didn't really even plan on, or up in here, I'm sorry. Yeah, because that's what I said. That, that's what sewer line in here. Yeah. Or, out, I, or out on the street. I wheeled it off. It was like 375 feet, so what you'd have to do, uh, put a manhole there, run it down, put a manhole right here. Bad thing would be you'd have to cross your uh, walk path right now, which is in pretty good shape, I think, in that area. But that's not a deal breaker with us uh, on the sewer. It's something you guys can talk about if you want to fool with it. If you don't, we don't have to do it. For folks that use RVs, do they look for that? Is that's that, that that's pretty much what I understand, uh, especially for the concerts. That's one of the first questions. What I mean, Heath for said. The sewer. No, she's not. Oh, for the sewer. sewer. Uh, yeah, I didn't know if that was a. It's not a big deal anymore. Everybody has. They they, they really just need electric. Holding tanks that yeah. usually can take care of it for yeah, three or Back in the day when I did the camping, you know, yeah, it was a I must. Know. You know. This, I know that's yes, yeah. a big thing. But right. I didn't know about with the sewer. Mm -hmm. So there's people, not, there's the, not going to probably be any permanent people down there. It's just for people no. coming in for like concerts. And yeah, stuff. that's that's one thing. I would recommend you put it in any kind of restrictions or however you do that yeah. to not allow yeah, that. Yeah, it'll be no long time. We're not going to have people set up, you know, all during the week. One thing with this, the ability center, they really don't need people intermingling in this area. So we're hoping it'll just be, you know, Friday, Saturday, and leave Sunday. Be special cases, I'm sure. So I could be busier than you think. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you're probably going to have some people want to come in maybe on a Thursday. Could be, could be. But we'll kind of cross that bridge yeah. when we get to it. And our downtown businesses would like to have the extra. I'm sure they would, yeah. <laughs> What's your timetable on that? Uh, we won't be going, I won't do anything until probably after the late fall. I have to get go through zoning, make sure this is, you know, we can do that. Um, I can do all the work myself. I'm retired semi now, so I got the equipment. So. You, you know concrete people. Concrete pads and stuff like that. <laughs> and no, I'm not going to do concrete pads. That's one of the things we kind of talk to people that do this, that camp a lot, and they're like, it's not a big deal. You know, we want the shade more than anything. Mm -hmm. So, And it'll be easy access. They can just, uh, this will be a common area right here. They can just walk right across and get on the path and head right to the concert hmm. or whatever is going on. We might could even work on a little sidewalk connector right there. Could. Phase two. Definitely. So, anyway. Mm -hmm.
Anybody want to see anyone? Okay. Okay. Just show me where, where I'm trying to see where everything This is 231. Yes, 231. This is the uh, Pat Co building. Right. right here is why I need to run that 24 inch over this big ditch. Because what is, I found you want to stay busy. Uh, we leased it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nikki and Brian King and Wendy are on the phone. This is in the blue. Yeah. But, um, everything drains that way. But when it gets right to the end, I don't that's know if they've never had a ditch there. Well, it just pulls up about three foot deep. I'm going to say, I was on the commission when the park was started, and the mayor at the time met with some property owners down there and offered to put in a swell to help drain it. Yeah. And we were told emphatically we would not step one foot on their property. So we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see that being a problem at all. Okay. No. That's a, that's a children's park, isn't it? So is that the, that's a that's farmer's farm park. park. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's I guess what it would be up here. Yeah. 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 That's okay. the only big entrance coming in. All right. So. <coughs> Any other questions? I think it's a good thing. I think. Well, I hope so. Very flood plain, though, back into the room. Remember, we had the rain that wanted to put something um, that was more. That was on the other lot. Yeah. So I don't. I think, I think this is. I think this will be out of it. How long will it feel that pond be a foot? I don't have any idea. I remember pond when I was a kid. Do what, Nancy? What'd you say, Nancy? I said there's little sections that seem like they're, you know. That when you checked on, mm -hmm. it was flood I think that right there is going to be high enough. All the way around, it may be floodplain, but I think that's because it's kind of a little knoll when you look yeah. out yeah. over the rest of it. So I knew this was coming. I'm kind of tickled about this. This mm -hmm. could be I'm a. Thrilled. I kept asking you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, it'll work out. Find the right spot. You know, something like that. But that when when mm -hmm. Nikki and Brian Wendy got that, I mean, I looked at it. I thought this would be perfect for you know a campground. Well, I hope it works out so well. You're willing to work with us, maybe on future expansions in other areas. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give it somebody that knows what they're doing and has done it. So, good deal. We'll get all that straightened out. Everything you get, anything you need from us, okay, we'll Appreciate make it make it happen. All right. Next item: Brad and Angela Kaufman. <laughs> I didn't know if you brought a sketch of what you'd like to put in or not, but <coughs> yeah, we came straight from work, so yeah. okay. well, <coughs> you, you, you can explain it to me. We do have a sketch though or some <laughs> plans, but I'm Angela Kaufman, this is Brad. Um and we own Kaufman Family Care and Wellness. Um we started this almost two years ago, um, just part time and it kind of expanded quickly. So we're in Ode, um, the O'Berry Stevens office beside Rice in the Rice Plaza. And we've outgrown our spot. <laughs> and we've looked around several different areas trying to find a new home for us. Um, today we had, I've seen 33 patients through there and our behavioral health um, provider seen 20. So we had that many patients come through that little office. So we're needing to build an office. Um, we've looked at a few different lots. We haven't nailed anything down, but we're looking at like 2,500 square feet, um, pretty brick front, hopefully. Um, of course, we have to have enough parking for that too, but um, hopefully, you know, in the next like six months, we can find a new spot and at least start building something. So, um, right now we have like seven different employees, but again, we, need, we just need more room so we can continue to expand, so. We've met with Nancy a few times about a few lots, that lot's still on hold right now. Yeah, I think that's one you're mainly interested yeah. in. Yeah, by O'Reilly's. By O'Reilly's in it. Yes. That's okay, that's where it is. But that's kind of held up with the bank right now. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. I'm supposed to know something in a few more days. Yes. Um, I think it was involved in the bankruptcy maybe at this point. We're supposed to close on it in December and then it's just been one thing after another with it. but. Hopefully, we do get some closure on it because that is a good spot for us. And you can, they, can have, they can have parking there for the square footage that they're using. Then I would figure that square footage and every um, 250 square feet, they need to supply a parking space. So that I can figure that and, and they can come up with that and we can look at it, see that they can do that, and then follow all the state guidelines because I don't do anything unless they get a plan get the state, state to approve it because I'm not going to approve it for anything. And if that, if that doesn't work out, you know, we do have a few other places 
is, you know, within the fever density limits that we've kind of looked at. Um, the lot there by Taco Bell. Yeah. We talked to him about that lot. So that's our next stop. At this kind of behind where the bank's going to go there. It would be nice to have pretty buildings and not have all lot open lots, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> I'm all behind you. Okay. <laughs> we've actually cut jobs because we've outgrown our spot. Yeah. So we've we, had to get, we, have, we had some new like, genetic testing and things like that, cancer screenings that we were doing. Um, but we had to get rid of some of that stuff just because we don't have enough space. So we're excited to have more room and expand. So. Awesome. Are you and just being no curious now? Yeah. What either location you're looking at is it something you can even expand further down the road if you want okay. to? Yeah. Good. We recently. I'd hope you'd have to build and move again. Yeah. Yeah. That's when what you, we want to be able to like grow into it as well. But and we we just opened a second location in Owensboro too because we have so many patients that come from Evansville and Tell City even, and so they're stopping there now to kind of give us some more room here, but. Anyway, yeah, I think we'll keep growing. Hopefully. Cool, that's awesome. Yeah. Just don't go away. I'm not. Really <laughs> <finished>. <laughs> I was one of those patients in there today. We have the ones where we did have a lot of concern that we were moving our practice, but we're, it's just an expansion. Well, so we're staying here. We like being here. We're small. Awesome. Anyway. Well, we're happy to have you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is fire truck bids. Two. We have one from Rob Hubbard, with Victory Fire Equipment out of Louisville, and the other is Jason Colson with Atlantic Emergency Solutions. Well, I don't do all those for a long time. This is from Atlantic Emergency Solutions. Hey, we're going out here on the left side. It'll be right where the park is, right where the side of the park And this one is uh, the engine squall 12 foot. Price is $470,382. Four hundred and seventy three eighty two. Well, yeah, I was what I was going to do was once we open these, we're not going to accept a bid tonight. We're going to turn it over to the fire department to look Did it over. Them. Huh? Did you pair a little bit on going? Yeah, where everybody's because they're going to hold up more better than I do. Uh, I'm going to have to have one on this one. It's not going to go. There goes that. Yeah, don't switch. You got it. Oh, you very. Yeah, you're bringing lethal weapons into the meeting. What are we talking about? Should we trust you guys with a sharp object? Same. You got to start wanting me before he comes in. I know you use the pair of them. I can't believe it. Not Atlantic. Now fire equipment, half these fire apparatus. Sorry. Okay, this from Southeast Apparatus. Is there a specification? No, that's mine. Oh, okay. Total bid price of three hundred and fifty one thousand four hundred and sixty dollars. It's a 2024 Dodge 5500 crew cab with the Southeast Extreme Duty Rescue Quick Attack, which I'm sure meets all the specs, but I don't know if this one told any more details on it.
It's a Dodge Ram 5500 as well. Four by four crew cabs. Interesting lady inside besides see what's going on. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is we brought these in, turn them over to David to let the fire department look at and Commissioner Patton, the fire commissioner. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we have to have a special call meeting come back. <coughs> Do you have any questions about the bids? All right. We'll move on down then. The next item is what I'm going to add on here is the, I know you all through KLC have heard a lot of the discussion on the medical cannabis. Mm -hmm. And we've got several options. We can come in and opt in or we can opt out or we can do nothing. Uh, if we do nothing, Everything will fall under the state guidelines and state regulations. Uh, if we opt out, they cannot be here, period. If we opt in, we can set our own regulations and stuff, the planning and zoning, like where they can go. State law requires they have to be at least 1,000 feet away from a state licensed daycare and a school, public school. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a private daycare or like a non-public or parochial school, they don't have any distance. We can exceed the distance and do the thousand feet from any school or all schools, any daycare and all daycares. We can do a thousand feet. I would recommend going further doing a thousand feet from the park. But this is something the state has passed. Uh, we just gotta live with it. It's there where, whether we want it or not. So it's not gonna be a, a big financial windfall to the city. A lot of a lot of people think that this is gonna bring in big bucks to the communities and It'll, it just, it'll bring people in, but we can't charge it. There's no fees for it. You can't charge uh, taxes on it. You can do a business license, but it has to be fair and in line with any other business license we but have for other sure businesses. You're not sure you're going to have a place. Not sure you're going to have it. Just the, the state is broken up into 11 districts. The grad district that we're in is, is one of the districts. There will be four dispensaries in that grad area. And you don't hear no one broke it. Well, pretty sure. yeah. well, they well it's, it depends on how many apply for because it's kind of done by lottery, but no county can have more than one yeah. unless there are nobody apply for it in any of the other counties. So Owensboro and Henderson can each get one. So in a great area, that's a million metropolitan area, it almost guarantees they'll have one. Well, if there's somebody who wants to put one there. Yeah. I mean, but I'm like you, I'm pretty much guaranteed to feel there is. But I know there's some people in this county that's been very interested, showed a lot of interest in doing one also. I know David Pike said that needed, at the end of his discussion the other day over at Henderson, he was saying that was one of the things we need to get on pretty quick. Yeah. So I'd like to do kind of basic our, like we need to opt in. our first rating of an ordinance tonight to, I would recommend opt in. That's, well, I would yeah. think so. <coughs> so if we can get that in the form of a motion, we can start moving I'll forward. Make the motion we opt into the medical cannabis. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor saying about that. Uh, uh, opposed saying. Motion passes. Okay. James, James, you have anything to? No, I don't have anything right now. I don't have anything to say. Mm, I don't. No, I'm, I like they got their own phone thing later. Them. Well, you know what I've been working on, but I'm not ready to show okay. everybody yet. That's all right. <laughs> we don't want you. Do oh, you have anything? Paul, Paul <laughs> gave me a project. Mike. I've been working on it hard. Yes, we have interviewed, uh, we interviewed four people last Tuesday. We have called three of them back to come and see where they are at in their tops, testing, uh, running, push-ups, such that. Uh, and I'm asking permission tonight to go forward and, and hire two of the three. So that's what I'm asking the city to do. I move that we hire two of the three prospects. Second. Have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Mike, can they give us seven or eight? Eight. Okay. Funding is in place. I knew, I knew that would yeah. go. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, those in favor, signify the aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Don't know. David? Yes, sir. Hmm? Ann? Yep. Ann? He wrote a letter. Uh, when did you write that? It was last week. He wrote a letter last week to the city? No, ma'am. To the owner of that property. To the owner, and you haven't heard from him? I haven't heard from him yet. Okay. Where I live. My neighbor has a house 
I've been there for 16 years and no one's ever lived in that house. And they mow the yard whenever they want to. Um, this is about 10 feet from my back carport. This is the front. And he mowed the grass and he just mowed it in circles. And then he stuffed all, those, all that big tall mound of grass with those little seeds from the maple trees down in a big hole in the front yard. It's about two feet from the street. This is it right here. That's the view from my driveway if you're standing out there. This is coming from the other direction. They can't see me sitting at the edge of my driveway getting ready to turn out. What it is, it's about 12 little trees that have all come up and grown with all of this water. But it hangs out over the street. My street's a really good street for people to walk on. It's a good beaver dam street to walk on. And sometimes they have little kids on bicycles or running along with them. You can't see it. Can I what address you're at? Because I have no idea where you're talking okay. about. Okay. Uh, at the corner of Broad and 12th. Broad and 12th, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Cross from Emma Gary. Mm -hmm. okay. But this is the more of the front yard that's right next to my driveway. This last time they didn't mow for three weeks. Really, 16 years. The leeches. And I talked to her about a month ago, and I asked her uh, when they were going to take that mess down there and she said that Joe wasn't quite ready and I'm quoting her that he wasn't quite ready to cut that down yet. Not Joe and Debbie who you're talking about. Uh-huh. That's mm -hmm. who I'm talking about. I knew that when she said that. But they were not very nice about it. I'm through being nice. I didn't know they weren't I didn't know they hadn't lived there in sixteen well, years. I knew they weren't living there now. Just like uh, that. A mess. This is not where they live. Oh. No, no, no. Well, this house has been vacant there. for I've been there 17 years. No one's lived there. I had a homeless man come to my house about two months ago, and I called the police about it because I didn't know him, and he was really dirty, and he wanted to know if he could sleep in my garage. Just make a little drive down Broad and see this place. Can you pass go down this way? So you're already on it? Yes. David? And do something about it. 16 years is long enough. I didn't know it was empty, I'll be honest with you. It hasn't been I mean, anyone there. A young man came and lived there for about two weeks okay. to a month one time. It's vacant. And when I checked with the city, they told me that he paid a light bill, a water bill, and a gas bill. I go over to that property because it's right adjacent to my carport, just a few feet away. And I cut down poke so the purple berries aren't all over my furniture and everything. I have sprayed the poison ivy, and I'm tired of doing it. Okay, well, we've got code enforcement will follow up, but we will get the trees right next to the road cut down. But, like I say, the they can't see me there, and they let their children go, and that's understandable. Is that the one right on the curve? Okay, no, it's she's, a, you're right in the car. The, right. the brownstone house right, right on the corner. Okay, you see the Coggins years ago. Do what? That's where the Coggins uh -huh. lived years ago. Coggins. Uh huh. Parkers, I think, yes. lived there. Yes. Yes, they did. Uh huh. John Robert. Yeah. Mary. It's just the, that clump serves no purpose. And. Well, with it being on the edge of the street right there, we can take care of it because it will be on city road. It's about two feet from the road. And it's over in the road. Now traffic has to go out and around. It, uh, it's ridiculous. That part we can take care of right away. Code enforcement will do what they can, but it's yeah. a process. Code enforcement, he's working on it. And I will have to say, that's, just, that's a, a process. And sometimes it's not a very fast process. But like I say, the clumps of trees out there by the highway, we can take care of right away. I complained last year. I complained last year. I can't do anything about an empty house or a vacant house, but if 
I know that you can. The, 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 the grass and stuff we can do something about. Yeah. Three it, weeks. And then they mow it, and then we're starting all over. That's the whole. And, and trust me, it doesn't make me happy sometimes. You can ask David. I understand completely. I can't understand why anybody would have a house like that and be in I don't understand it either, but I quit trying to understand it after about 10 years of it. Who lived this last? I have no idea. They never rented it, didn't do anything, huh? Apparently not. And Joe and Debbie own it now. And they own the house next to it also, right? Well, I don't know. Don't know about that. Okay. They, they, live, they live over on the next street over. Well, now they live out south town. Yeah, well, yeah, oh, they I didn't live, know they lived. Yeah, they lived in their mother's house. Her parents' house. house. The backyard is yeah. overgrown with things around the trees. Yeah, There's an old shed out there. Henry, they lived in it. They moved out of it some few years ago. It's just, it just needs to be. Is that what they own the house? They just ran it in? I guess. I don't know. Please. No, I okay. guess they own David, whatever you need to do with with that one, but so we can get the trees taken care of. Go on. If you just hired two people, do you not tell you who they are and pay away? Well, start day. He, he got three by three, and he could. We gave they're him still a interviewing. Two. They're they're still interviewing. interviewing. I'm sorry. I, still interviewing. That just, I was saying we did hire one, but I, I, yeah, you're yeah. talking about the police officer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, did, we have to do interviews. That way, when the next meeting come up or have a call meeting to technically put the names to it. So. He's here because he's kind of representing uh, Davis County Hospital. So he came in to see what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> and that's fine. We appreciate the fact that you would come. Thanks, you know, Dave. Interested in <laughs> so do you have anything you'd like to tell us? No, not really. I was here for the Planning Commission. I thought the Planning Commission did very good. Uh, they did a lot of good discussing of the matters, uh, had the maps out, did some um, good deliberations on what the proposed text amendments were, and I thought they did a fabulous job. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, I've heard a little bit about that. Can you tell us where we're talking about, what you plan on doing? I've just heard a little bits and pieces from the community. So. It's in Hartford. So. It's in Hartford. It's in Hartford. It's not here. Well, I still think it's in Hartford. It's going to affect Beaver Dam. It's up by Southern States. Southern States. Over on uh, 69. Yeah, we're in discussions with uh, the property owner there to potentially uh, put in a facility, um, purely outpatient facility. Nothing that would keep folks overnight. But, um, you know, it's looking to expand access to, to medical care here in uh, Ohio County. Okay. Well, that's interesting. But I hope you get a good cooperation out of both. I, was gonna, I will ask him a question. I know that uh, whenever I got the information, I know that they're putting now. They have plenty of, they have, their nope. plan is they have, and they have plenty of parking. They have two, they have one entrance and then another is optional uh, from the back of it. But the main question, I think, that uh, politics is about the pharmacy. And we do have pharmacies inside of it. Places, but it's not going to have a drive-through pharmacy, is it? Right. And if it's a pharmacy, it wouldn't be a pharmacy that'd be open to the general public. Well, you know. but I want to clarify that with Nancy. Like I told you, also Hartford is separate, and I'm not going to tell Hartford how to operate their city. No, <laughs> so, I'm just, no, but I'm, that's I'm we have this question, just like I would not expect them to operate ours. Would, uh, <laughs> Please no. <laughs> yeah, well, that was just one of the things. But I just want to be clear. I'm not. Pro or con either way, <laughs> because that's not my city to. I don't like information. It's all I like. Entertain a motion to go into closed session. Motion to go into closed session. Second.